Hi there. Thank you for downloading, listening to, and watching the Lean Into Artcast, the show where a couple of visual, couple of visual storytellers get together and take a walk around some topics that tend to cross one's path when you go on this endeavor of communicating with images. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. My name is Jersey Drozd. I am a cartoonist and teaching artist. And this week below me is the co-host. He is... <laughs> I never know where I am. Hi, I'm Rob Stenzinger. I'm a user experience designer, interactive uh, workshop, storyteller, and a creative coach. And I make up my title fresh every week for you. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a special guest. Welcome, Greg Shegel. Hi. Yeah, that's me. I'm Greg Shegel. And I'll, I'll do what you guys do. I'm a cartoonist and author, illustrator, and occasional podcaster, and uh, occasional YouTube video poster. And... Uh, guest on lean into art occasionally we should yeah, say it's great to have you back yeah, yeah. You. Uh, is this my third mm -hmm. i think that's right it's been a while yeah. it's, been, it's a while. been a while is this is this like snl or if you do it five times i get a the smoke <laughs> the smoking jacket five timers club I uh, we need to come up we have to backwards create a tradition because that's a great <laughs> idea that is a great idea <laughs> A uh, smoking jacket? I don't know. There's got to be a lean into art kind of uh, garment yeah, cool. that we can yeah. invent. An artist but... beret or something. <laughs> <laughs> a smock. A smock. Right. <laughs> oh. We are the cartoon artists for, from, uh, I suppose, I mean, that's a, I suppose that's a self-referential thing, right? I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's irony piled on irony, but yeah, we got, we got to do something there. I mean, yeah, I don't. We don't have like props and affectations, so we don't even. You guys, you guys don't have to do anything. I was, you could, you, it, it's, it's cool. You don't have to yes and all of my nonsense. <laughs> oh well, this was good nonsense. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So it, that'll have to be an exercise to to figure out. Like honestly, because it's great to have you back, right? And and mm -hmm. you're mentioning you. that's like well, we've had a few people back a bunch of times. Be nice to say thank you for that, especially. Oh mm -hmm. well, thank you that's for true. having. I enjoy talking to you guys on and off the air. Sweet. Greg Shegel of Hatter Entertainment, hatterentertainment.com is where you'll find all the comics and podcasts that he makes. But you Actually, also I do... Send, I would I would send yeah. people to gregshegel.com even before hatterentertainment.com. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm going that, there right now. Hatterentertainment.com still exists, and that is where the podcast lives. But I've okay. shifted a lot of the art and comic stuff to gregshegel.com. A little mm. easier to find. Look at this. And, and it's right more there. focused on me as a cartoonist, author, illustrator, and award-winning or prize-winning cookie baker. That's true. Yes, yes. You, you. Uh, oh, hey, look at this. There's even a link to author visits right there on the main page. You can see all these kids who are wrapped with rapt attention at the screen that Greg's pointing to, where he's showing an image of uh, a redesign he did of a GI Joe character into a superhero. Um, that I then redesigned on one of my YouTube videos because of a suggestion from one Jersey Drozd. Oh, snake Ooh, eats its own tail in a very. Or that's not the expression. It's not. A, that's not a snake eating its own tail. That's just like things begetting new things. Yeah, there Which we go. Which tends to happen when you do a lot of interesting stuff. Because uh, and you just mentioned the YouTube videos, and that's your series called Stuff Sketched, right? Yes. Which is awesome. a, a spin off of my podcast Stuff Said. Yeah, I've, I we've try and do one of those a month. Videos as a family, and it's uh, it's it's yeah, it's great. Oh, thank you. Great. Uh, it's educational and fun to hear you talk about your your thoughts and process as you illustrate oh. a character. I will also thank say you. this. I appreciate that. Nice I subscribe to, I subscribe to over one hundred YouTube channels, but Greg's is the only one where I have the little bell icon clicked, so I get an email every time there's a new stuff sketched episode. <laughs> and that's the absolute truth. I don't lie, Greg. So. That's but yes, true. I also know you do not lie. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, so that that's that's link. We'll link to that in the show notes. But that's on YouTube. And then also we got it. We'll mention this a couple times, I'm sure. Greg's T Public uh, site, where you've been doing some really interesting uh, T-shirt designs, both like completely playing it straight, but then also some. Um, I would say, is it would it be obtuse references, or is is it? Oh, uh, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I call them, I call them like super deep cuts. Um, yeah, it's a thing. It's I, I think it's some sort of uh, I don't know quirk about me is I like to find something that is so that's just unrecognizable. Like, what is that? Like, oh, it's this very specific reference to this 
very specific thing. So like one of the ones I just put up, it's, it's a it's a logo for something called Neil's Whole Taxi. And you look at you like, I don't know what this is. It is a logo on a taxi cab in a, I'm going to say six to eight second scene from Joe versus the Volcano. Oh my God. The movie I love. Yeah. And it's the most <laughs> ridiculous thing to be referencing from that movie, but it's, it's about as deep a cut as you can go. Right. <laughs> so it does okay. set a bar. Yeah. So, what so here's, like, it's a very yeah. concrete example of, of like, this is the kind of a thing that, that, um, that gets talked about as far as like, what is a good practice for, or, oh, I'm going to start a podcast or I've got a web comic or I've got this thing I'm going to commit to and I'm going to do a thing on the end of the internet. And it's about, I like space. Well, is that specific enough? And you can go further and further. I think you provided the a fantastic example to yep. say, you go to Ho- Neil's whole taxi. That's how far <laughs> you go. Well, and depending on what your range. goal is. If your goal is to sell t-shirts, don't go that far. <laughs> nobody's buying a Neil Cole taxi t-shirt. Like, too far. That is Back purely off. an indulgence on my part. I haven't, I'll say this, I haven't even bought one of my own <laughs> shirt design. Okay. Well, they're cool designs. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, so that's a speculative, th- yeah, okay. There's, um. yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're very specific. But, but I appreciate what you're saying. Yes. I mean, the idea is even in, in writing or art or whatever, people always say like, write what the thing you would want to read or whatever it is. And that is that ca- the idea of that is to get specific and tell your story or tell the story that's only yours to tell or whatever the case, whatever phrasing you might want to use for that is like, what makes your story special to you? Why are you telling it? Why is this drawing special? Blah, blah, blah. And some things are universal and some things aren't. You, know, you look at something like Adventure Time, that's a very specific show. And on the outset, you'd be like, who is this for? And then it becomes a very big, popular thing. Or Steven Universe or anything that sort of has such a specific point of view to it. I think that made mm. sense. It totally I think so. makes sense. Um, yeah. So somewhere in there, okay. So the the seed of your specific voice is in Neil's whole taxi, but then you know, you, you wrap it in more things and, and the, a t-shirt has, you know, the disadvantage of not being a, an entire story. But then if you're channeling that into um, a cohesive narrative and whatnot, well, okay, now, now there's, there's these strong signals of, of your, uh, I guess, stuff that matters to you because why, why talk generally about stuff that matters? And this is a trap I get in. It's, and, and it's something that I'm trying to continue to practice to get better at is that specificity. So I, I, get excited when i when i see it um so i don't look if it's the sort of thing like if anybody actually recognized the reference then you're like all right this person and i are connect like that's a connection you cannot break well that that Um, yeah that's what i was gonna say that's the service you're rendering greg are you looking for that person who loves joe the volcano the way you specifically do joe versus the volcano what i say versus what did i say you didn't say versus you just said joe the volcano <laughs> that was my that that's the first sign that <laughs> so I'm creeping the into I old age. Done. <laughs> Joe the that's volcano. That's I would have done. Joe the volcano. Hey, you get it? <laughs> Joe the, I mean, that Joe could the volcano. Be a good wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh but yes, so we uh, everybody should go check out his T public site. There's uh updating it all the time with other um deep cuts. Um but we got a we got a topic to cover today. And that is um, this idea of checking in on your social slash professional network. Um, you know, I see lots of there's, there's like different uh, like Twitter groups, like kid lit groups who get together on Thursdays and talk. You know, it's like it's like a sort of a hashtag driven chat room on social media platforms for people to do networking. I see there's different Facebook groups for different web comics creators and kid lit creators. Um but I'm talking specifically about like one-on-one sort of checking in. And the reason I asked you to come in here, Greg, is you are, I would say, one of the pe- people I would put in like the uh, highest echelon as somebody who is really good about like, even if it's not scheduled, if it's not like a, a regular thing, I can count on, I'm going to hear from you on a regular basis. And there'll usually be very little agenda. I'll just be like, hey, I just want to make sure, how you doing? Is everything going all right? Tell me about tell me about what's happening in your life. Um, and I thought 
that's that's worth unpacking. Like, why is that a good thing to do? Um, how does I'm sure there's more. There's all sorts of benefits that come out of just that come out of doing that. Besides being like, uh, hey, when all is said and done, I want the record to show that I was a good guy. <laughs> I'm sure it's not as simple as that, but um, are you guys ready to dive into it? I can hit the music. Hit it. All right, here we go. Oh, scary music. <laughs> Do you recognize this, Greg? I chose this for you. It's it's I'm from the think. opening. It's from the opening of GI Joe the movie. <laughs> That's the part where uh, oh, the I, 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 that's again, that's a different kind of chat that I'm not as I'm not as keyed in on. One of one of our first conversations together was when I was on your podcast. Stuff said ages ago, it was like 2014, and yep. uh, you started talking about GI Joe the movie, and I remember the line you said, "This is clown time." <laughs> <laughs> and then we both like joyously unpacked like the 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 nonsense and insanity of the GI Joe movie. Um, that, both that sounds like me. I've definitely described <laughs> things as clown. And that movie, I mean, that the bit at the end where Doc says Duke is in Duke's a coma is really, coma. yeah, the best. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so checking in. Um, what does that mean? What does it look like? I. You know, we, we structure the show typically in a way where we pick a single topic, drill all the way down, but we start with like sort of like exterior features. Practically speaking, what does this thing look like when we're doing the thing? And then in the, in the next part, like sort of unpack, like, well, why? Why would it be important to do this thing that way? So what what do we mean when we say checking in? What what uh, what do we mean? What kind of one-on-one -on -one connecting are we doing? Um, Greg, what kind of one? You... you one-on-one uh, -on -one connect in a way that's different than a lot of my other friends. Like, I, you'll just call I me. I make a phone call? You call me on the <laughs> phone. <laughs> well, I mean, we are, yeah, we, we are of, a, of the same generation. And it was a generation pre-internet where you would call people. Like, mm -hmm. my, my running joke in the past few years is that uh, a phone call is conversation on demand. Yeah. In the same way that you can call up a movie, or you can call up a, an album or something and stream it. You could just call somebody and say, Hey, you available to have a conversation? And then you can have that conversation. Can I live stream you right now? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, if, you know, great. Some people text first and say, are you around for a call? I've done that with you Jersey every now and again. Like, are you available or whatever? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then you have a conversation. It's just email. I also use a lot of email. I don't yes, like I texting do. so much because the, the, just doing this is annoying. But I do email a lot and I do phone calls. Video chat, I'm, I'm 50. I like it, but I feel like I need to put my attention on the video chat. Whereas yeah. when I'm on the phone, I can be doing two things at once, yeah. housekeeping or drawing or whatever. Um, but yeah, I do like talking on the phone, especially because I live and work from home by myself. There's nobody else around. Again, it's like you need to have some kind of interaction, or at least I do. And sometimes it's easier to do that on the phone than to schedule time and meet up, especially if people are in different states or different cities, different parts of the city, or are they themselves busy writing or drawing or doing housekeeping? So yes, I do like to call people. Um, a lot of people don't like to talk on the phone anymore, which is... Right, right. Like, this is the thing that thing. like when we first started becoming friends, I was caught off guard by how much my relationship with my phone had changed since you know the last 10 years. And I remember thinking like, I, I when I would call you, I would text you first saying, "Is it okay if I call right now?" And then I called you after that, and you were like, "Look, if I don't want to talk to you, I won't answer it." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I was like, "That's yeah. right, we get to do that." <laughs> yeah, and especially it, now, like you can see who's calling, so you can make yeah. a very conscious choice of like, "I want to or I don't want to answer the phone." Sometimes I don't hear the phone; my ringer is always off. So if my phone is not near me. I'm eating dinner, I'm eating lunch. I'm not going to see the phone. If I'm watching TV, I just don't see the phone at all. And then I see the phone. And this is, this is my own little peccadillo. People don't leave voicemails anymore. Right. Which, which I feel like there's, a, there's people don't recognize the value in a voicemail. For instance, let's say I called, <laughs> let's say I called Rob. Let's involve mm -hmm. Rob in it. Mm -hmm. Let's right. say I called Rob and he didn't answer the phone, right? Oh, but no, I Greg. called him because I really only had... I only had like five minutes to talk. I was about to go into a movie theater, but I had a quick question for Rob. Right? Mm -hmm. So let's say I called 
and he didn't answer. My voicemail would say, hey, Bob, this is Greg. I just had a quick question. I'd ask, I'd ask the question, and I would say, but don't call me back for the next two hours because I'm about to go into a movie. Now, if Rob didn't listen to that voicemail but just called me back, I'd be in a movie. <laughs> and then he he would be like, he just called me. What's going on? But if you listen to the voicemail, he'd, he'd hear me say, don't call me back. I'm about to go to a movie. I'm about to be in a meeting. You yeah. know, the message could be something like, hey, listen, I'm about to go into a meeting. I need you to call me at this time to get me out of this meeting. And then if he calls to, you know, it's like voicemail, is, there's value in it. Yeah. Think of it as audio email. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sure. with your voice so it's, yeah. uh okay so uh, there are strengths of of that you know traditional form of communication that, and uh and i i th i wonder but it's really what happened though so so you you survived this threshold of now like somehow we all became like reluctant to to give and receive phone calls. And, uh, and it's, it seems to be fairly common. Haven't read any studies on it overall. This is anecdotal, but I, it yeah. seems to be, so how, how to do, um, and, you, and you're remembering the usefulness of voicemail, right? I mean, I'm someone who I've had jobs where I've had a pager and I've used the pager for personal and what, and, and, you know, uh, home use and combine that with voicemail, combine that with like having codes or whatever. And all of a sudden you've got, your got these hybrid ways of, of communicating that let you, you know, get stuff done. But like a lot of the, it was like, we all had the expectations and the common assumptions for that, that mode to work well. Um, so I don't know, like, is this something that you're, um, I don't know, hoping comes back or, or. I mean, I am to some people, it depends who you ask, but to some people I am a dinosaur slash Luddite who's clinging to ideas of the past and to others. I am, I don't know what, um, mm -hmm. uh, so like I was, I was late to get a smartphone. Like I was resistant to that, not resistant, but I was just like, I don't need this thing. Okay. So I'm not going to get this thing. I'm able to communicate just fine. So when I went freelance in 2002 when I was working from home, I did not have a cell phone and I would take a break in the middle of the day and go for a walk and I'd get back and I'd have a voicemail and, and it would be from, a client and they'd be like you somebody i worked with previously and they're like you got to get a cell phone we got to get in touch with you and i would always tell them if a drawing of spongebob cannot wait 24 hours <laughs> you, you need to call somebody else <sighs> like i get that this stuff is important but i promise you i can do the drawing quickly and it was not that urgent that it couldn't wait two hours or whatever it was for me to get back from lunch or for whatever i was doing so mm -hmm. I always had this sort of needs versus wants, and I still do it. We're like, do I need this thing? Do I need this particular piece of technology? And again, it makes me a little bit behind the eight ball. You know, so people have been using Instagram for years. I just started using Instagram in January of this year, and I feel like I'm completely in the dark, and I don't know how it works, and I'm just like, I don't know the point of this, but I'm trying, and I feel very old. Um, <laughs> so... So in some regards, it's like, it's a nice thing that I've, I've held on to this idea of human communication between people. And look, I don't do it with everybody. So if they, there might be people watching this who know me like, you never calls me. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> call me too. Um, and then, and then it, there are certain people I know that prefer not to be on the phone. And for those people, you know, I feel that only want to talk via text. I talk to those people less because I just, my preference is to not text. I'd mm -hmm. rather email than text. But, you know, the, 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 everything's becoming more and more, everybody's got their own little ways they like to do things. And I don't know, I try to adjust as best I can. I try to be, I try to be a rubber tree plant. <laughs> um, I admire so, those plants too. What's so Joseph Coco is in the chat as we're streaming live at mm -hmm. twitch.tv. And I think he found a really great way to draw into relief the difference between what we're talking about when we're talking about this kind of like checking in versus the kind of networking one does on a platform like a Facebook or a Twitter is he says that I think calls work well for small tight networks, but it seems like everyone wants to be part of a large loose network. Now I, I would, I'm going to challenge the premise only to the extent Joseph that the, 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 the sort of thesis of this episode is only is going to be focusing on 
Um, what benefits are there to focusing on smaller, tighter networks as well, right? Because like one could say, I could see somebody, and I'm not attributing this to, to Joseph, but I could see somebody um, sort of assuming that, well, a small, tight network, that's not going to get you gigs, and it's not going to get your stuff circulated and promoted, and if you're trying to work your hustle, how does a small, tight network help with your hustle? It doesn't seem like there's a really direct connection between those two th things, right? That all that all rings very true. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so that that is a way to try to segue into when we talk about checking in. What kind of things are we checking in on? Um, and then in like the next segment after we do like a quick break, we could talk about why, like what, like ben like long term benefits or even like more short term benefits can be derived from, from like focusing on a, a small tight network. But uh, Robin and Greg, when you're checking in on people, what are you checking in about? Rob, you go first. Um, let's see. What I'm checking. Let's see. I, I think with with people who I have a, um, an ongoing conversation, it's it's like, uh, how are they doing, and how are they? I, I guess you know, growing and feeling and all that kind of stuff. Typically about making things, but that's, you know, but I care more about people than just the. You know, like what are you producing for humanity or whatever it's it's just i i'm really enthralled about the it's a big part of my personality it's is like well oh gosh i bet you're thinking of interesting problems you're finding approaches to solving them and you're like how are you managing your life and resources in the world toward getting stuff done that you believe in and oh my god i can't get enough of that so and then i tend to build connections with people like that and and uh then it's also like well oh and how is your porch and the, the thing you were fixing or how is the you know how, how are your your friends or neighbors or, or family or whatever becomes a part of the narrative with that person is like you know you have your life they have their life and checking in is a chance to um wherever you are on your in your connection and context with them is to just um get updated on the story and so I, I tend to have some kind of stuff, story threads, I guess, that I'm like, well, let's, ex let's reconnect with those things and, and keep going. Um, so it looks- that's a, that's a cool way. Of, I've never even thought of it as like, sort of a, like, like a personal, personal soap opera, still storytelling. We're like, all right, when, when last we met Jersey, he was <laughs> embarking on this adventure. And then you check in and see where, where like what the next, chapter in that story that's actually very cool um i think i i i mean I, sim I do i do a similar thing i don't think of it in that capacity but it's mostly i know what my friends are up to and my my professional sort of peers i know what they're i have a sense of what they're doing and then every now and again i will just think about that thing something will happen that will remind me of like oh or i'll see them post something on social media and then instead of commenting on social media and this is where i'm to, to joe's point this is where i i blow it like i'm not good at doing the public face stuff i will not post on twitter anything i will email that person or call them and say hey i saw this thing on twitter <laughs> that's true that's true so and and for me oh, it's more like that's the cool thing to do now greg i don't know if you so you know it? fashion fashion runs in cycles so i think you're in the you're in the sweet spot right now where <laughs> the more emotionally um resonant thing to do and to build a real connection is to do the stuff that you're doing because hitting like or um you know lol or whatever as a reply <laughs> that doesn't resonate as much as someone doing what you're doing which takes more effort takes more time so Greg, Greg is funny. doing boutique social networking. That's well, you reminded thing. me of there's a conversation, there's a conversation I had in 1996. It was actually video recorded when I was an intern at Marvel Comics. We we would have this conversation, and a, one of the interns record made a video of our of his time there, and this is in the video. And we were discussing the the hierarchy of communication. And again, this is 1996, hmm. so it was what is what is of more value in communication: a phone call, a letter a postcard like how do those things stack up i think email was vi like it was barely a thing so email wasn't even in it and and i was very much that a phone call is the highest form of communication under in person like phone call is number one letter is number two and people were saying letter is a bigger deal because it's it's a more considered you're taking the time you have to put a stamp on it you have to mail it and i was saying that a phone call is a direct one-to-one -one, and it's immediate yeah. And it's, it's like, so anyway, 
to to the point you were just making of like where where the the value in these communications are and that there's value in reaching out to someone personally i don't dispute that and i and i think you know again i'm blowing up my own horn or tooting my horn because i try to do that i try to communicate with people directly uh and i also i feel weird sometimes about doing something online because then it feels like a public showing of like look who i know and that makes yes me yes there, the, the, I think something you and I have in common, Greg, is that we are very allergic to performative behavior. <laughs> and yeah, uh, may, maybe maybe one of us is, has the affliction a little bit more deeper than the other one. But I, I know so, that like says the, says the guys on a live streaming podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, well, we're on a live streaming podcast that doesn't have like PewDiePie numbers, and I suspect largely because of the the non performative aspects of what we we do, you know. Um, sure. But but um, but like, when, when the moment I detect like oh, it's it's unclear how much of this is about direct connection, how much of this it, like you, you can't help but even notice that like when you're talking to a good friend on Facebook that you know other people are watching, right? And there are times where that conversation being public is very very it has a lot of utility, right? Because like the conversation we're sharing, there's there's information in there that would be of use to other people who are struggling with this thing we're struggling with, right? But what, what I think what we're also talking about is listening for really idiosyncratic uh, stuff that where the utility to the public is not inherently obvious, right? Right. Um, so, yeah, like, so so uh, Nate Marcel is in the chat, too, and he, he's, he's chiming in on this, this thought. He's like, an old friend called me out of the blue a few days ago, and we ended up talking for an hour and a half. It was surprising and amazing and inspirational. It's nice to get a, a bit of another perspective or to put your own thoughts in perspective. And also, those are really the first, in caps, people I'm making something for. And that's another thing, too, is like... Um, when, you know, I did this book a couple of years ago, Science Comics Rockets, and I wanted kids to love it. I really, really wanted kids to love it. But yes, I'm thinking the whole time, like, but is, is Greg going to think it's funny? Because, like, I know Greg has very, very good comedic taste, right? And so oh. did Greg laugh at the jokes? Because that, that I know I nailed it, right? That kind of thing is worth thinking about as well. Um, but, and, and to the point, his name is Nate, did you say? Nate, Yes. The point he just made, so they spoke for an hour and a half. And I think that's something that a lot of people think about is like, well, if I haven't spoken to this person in so long, it's going to be a long conversation. And I think people get that in their heads of like, oh, I haven't spoken to this person in six months. If I call them, that's going to be a two hour conversation. And it doesn't have to be. Yeah. Like you can call someone and be like, hey, I just want to check in. I've got like 30 minutes. And it's, it's not that, you know, you can, you can do that. Now, look, if the conversation is going and you end up going for an hour and a half, which does happen with people that you whose company you enjoy, all the better. But sometimes you're busy and sometimes you have to go to the bathroom and sometimes you're getting another call or whatever. And, right. you know, life does happen. <laughs> Those are the three things, right? Those are the three pillars. <laughs> right. The bathroom, another call. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. The other call is always an awkward one, though. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. I need to trade you out for someone else. But, <laughs> yeah, but if, again, if, if it's somebody you know and you're friends with them, you go, hey, I'm getting another call. I got to take this one. Yep. The person should cool. say, hey, no problem. We've, we've been on the phone for an hour. I got other things to do too. <laughs> okay. Can I, can I talk? So I've, yeah. This is, this is probably like old 90s thoughts from, my, from like, you know, call waiting days. Oh, if you, if you want an even older 90s thought, it'd be like, hey, um, I got to stop talking. This show's about to start. It's just about to start. <laughs> Fair enough. There's something yeah. deeper here, and I want to dig into it in the next part of the show, where you you are outlining, but but just the shadows of principles and boundaries that you maintain, like that, like that's what's really interesting here too about for better or worse. Uh, Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. For better or worse is an asterisk that hang, hangs above all of our heads because we're not, <laughs> we're not that's a good quote. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. So, uh, so I do want to dig into that because there's, you're mentioning things. It's almost, but there's always a little bit of a hint of like, well, well why is that happening and whatnot? And I'm wondering if we hit enough of the mechanics where it's, it may be time to roll into the next part of the show. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I, I, I did. I, maybe we can grab this to take the, 
you're we didn't we did not hit on Jersey yet. So it's a, well, huh. that's not that's always a weird uh, thing to say. But like we didn't your your Great situation Jersey. as you far as what, what does it look like for you to uh, to do this kind of check in and whatnot, right? Oh, and so maybe well, we could bake that into the yeah. Let's take that to the second part. I, I what I'd really like to dig at the the question that I think both of you have a superpower in that you are both dynamite listeners. I mean, you guys really listen hard and process and reflect your understanding of the listening. You guys yes and really well. Um, and I think that's also a thing. Like this got pointed out to me recently when I was at some social event. Somebody pointed out how like Jersey really knows how to like like hear what you're saying and connect it to other things that would be of interest to that topic and then like direct it there. I'm like, well, yeah, that's like years of doing a podcast called Comics Are Great where I had to like research all my guests, you know, and like show up ready to debate their point of view with them, you know. Um, but you guys both do this as well. And so I'm curious if we could maybe at the, in the next part, when we talk about why this, like what benefits we derive from doing these check-ins also talk a little bit about like, what does listening look like to you? Like, what do you guys think about when it comes to like listening to somebody really carefully? Um, and is, is, is that like a, a skill you can unlock or is this something where it's just like, oh, well, there's just something wrong with me. <laughs> uh, but uh or right with you for that matter but uh before we do that we got to thank some people who make this show possible how does that sound um we'll take a minute and a half break that sounds, sounds valuable okay <laughs> all right i want to thank some people who make this show possible those are the people who support us on patreon uh, a couple of people in the chat are people who support us on Patreon. Patreon.com uh, slash Lena Tart is the website. What is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. If you believe in Robin Jersey and what they do, you can support it for as little as a dollar a month and you can cancel at any time. So you can, you know, show up, avail yourself of all the behind the scenes content and then check out again and maybe come back another time when you feel like the show is really giving you a lot of value. I want to thank five people, though, who have been supporting us on a regular basis, who haven't canceled their accounts, who continue to support us month to month. And first, I want to thank Greg Horvath. Thank you, Greg, for believing in us and what we do. You can find Greg on Twitter at IGMHorv77. And thank you to Rachel Ross, longtime supporter of the show. Thank you, Rachel. It means a lot to us. You can find Rachel on Twitter at NYC Terrace. That's New York City Terrace. And Becca Hilburn. Thank you, Becca, for believing in us and what we do. You can find Becca on all social sites at Natto Soup, even YouTube. And India Swift. Thank you, India, for believing in us and what we do. You can find India on Twitter at Old Swifty. Amazing animator. Do, do some really cool stuff on YouTube as well. And finally, oh my goodness, Carrie Goldblum-Billick. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, shows up to the chat rooms, interacts with us so much on the Discord and, and everywhere else online. You can find Carrie on Twitter at Mushin Girl. Join them at patreon.com slash lean into art where you'll find all the shows we make as well as the extra leans, the shows we record only for people to support us on Patreon. Thank you so much. It means a lot to us. All right. Okay. Ready to do the next part? Ready. Totally. Okay. Uh, I'll do another another heavy duty one. This is also G.I. Joe the movie and Transformers Season 3. Nothing, Greg? It, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Name that tune. I, what I really should have done is pulled like like the music from the match game, and um, uh, what would be another one from that period? Hollywood Squares. So we were just. I talking recognize about, Match Game and Family Feud before Hollywood Squares. Um. All right, next time. Next time I'll pull that. Fa family, well, Family Feud's pretty easy to, to recognize, that, that fiddle music. Oh, Match Game's pretty... I mean, maybe <laughs> not, but Match Game to me is like, I know it. It's, always, yeah. it's just always playing. It's like music in my head. <laughs> sure. Permanent elevator music. Um, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't pick it out of a lineup right now, but it, I'm sure it's one of those things where if I heard it, I'd, it would activate something. And or maybe I mean if it would activate anything, it would activate uh your sense of funkiness. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's very it was very like like guitar slapping wah wah stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. And maybe you just you oh, need good. to like have your memory jogged by having Gene Rainbird say like he kicked her in the blank. And yeah. then oh, <laughs> what a great <laughs> game. <laughs> All right. So enough about old game shows, which we could do a whole other episode about. Um, so what is listening when you guys show up, you guys like, and I've, I've watched you both at conventions as well. Like when we hang out at things like a two calf, I watch you guys sit across from somebody and you're giving them your 
hundred percent attention. Like you're really hanging, like not, I want to say hanging on every words, but you're, you're processing all the time while you're listening to somebody. So I don't know. It's just like for somebody who feels like they're not like the best at listening, what, how do you guys think about it? So the, the shortest answer I can give you is for me, listening is not thinking about what you're going to say next. So I've had conversations with people where I can tell that they are just waiting to get their thing in. And I do it sometimes too. And I know like, oh, I have this idea and I want to say this thing. But then I realize somebody else is talking. So you need to put that to the side and hope you remember it. Uh, in fact, when you mentioned before the break, I want to talk about this thing and what listening looks like, I thought of something. And then while you were doing the thank yous, I forgot about it because I was listening to the thank yous. And then as you brought it up again, I remembered like, oh, I have to tell this story. So here's, uh, uh, so I appreciate you saying that I'm very good at listening, but there are times where I'm very bad at it. And there was one instance where Chris Jerusso, who's been mentioned many times, was telling some story. He was explaining something. And when he finished, when it reached that natural point of like quiet where there's time for a response, my response was, I'm sorry, you need to say that all over again. I was, I didn't, I didn't hear a word of it. Like I completely wasn't, I was completely distracted. I, I didn't hear you. <laughs> oh, no. And he just repeated himself. Like, <laughs> he just told me what he just said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everything was good. I mean, this is again, somebody, you know, and you could be honest with and whatever, but the fact of the matter was something distracted me and my brain went somewhere else. And that happens. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not great at meditating. And I think listening is sort of a meditation because you have to clear your head and listen to what's happening in front of you and be mindful of the person you're, you're talking to. And sometimes they say something I've had, I've been listening to podcasts. There's an episode of Dan Harmon's podcast I was listening to, and he said something and my brain spun out into a story I was working on and like just started lighting up with, with ideas of like, Oh, this could work. This could work. And the next, I had to rewind the podcast because it was gone. Like I didn't hear another thing he said for the next six minutes because I was in my own head doing my own thing. Um, so to me, I think listening is it, it's listening. It's, it's, listening to the person and not your own thoughts and not whatever else is and not following the distractions wherever they might go and something i see rob do which is very cool and i don't have this capacity is he's got the note cards so when rob has a thought while he's listening to somebody he writes it down yeah so he he it down and then he's not distracted by it. he's distracted momentarily and probably for that six seconds he's writing something down he's maybe, you're maybe not hearing every word but once you're done, you're back in and you're listening again, hmm. unless you're talking to me. And then I say, wait, what'd you just write down? Because suddenly <laughs> I'm attentive. What's happening? <laughs> well, it depends on whose words I'm writing down. So I have a lot of practice facilitating meetings in and using sort of dry race boards and all that stuff. So I am, a, am, am accustomed to being sort of a complex, inch, a complex writing instrument, a slow fax machine, mm -hmm. something where uh, there's ideas and information floating around me and I am trying to absorb as much, absorb and connect and maybe synthesize and visualize TBD. Because if you go too far into that, yep, I'm, I'm all of a sudden have, you know, a jingle in my head and I'm writing stuff and I'm off doing something else. And I'm not part of the, 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 the scene and situation, which has happened to me. I think it happens to all of us where yeah. you are engaged, but then, you know, it's not like we're, computers that we can multi-thread and whatever so all of a sudden you're engaged on something else it also might be investing in the conversation but isn't in the moment with this particular like what someone's saying so it, there, there's a there's always a risk of that like you mentioned greg with the drawing and the, the notes and stuff but a lot of times it's it's not my words it's my um understanding of the person's words that like what they're telling me and then i can always go look back at my notes and construct a complex narrative of whatever's going on and i use this when i get inter interviewed and stuff like that and i'm trying to you know and certainly with collaboration and whatnot too where i can take things that there's no way i would have remembered like earlier parts of our podcast even and so but i can draw back in conversations and do threads and weave back and forth because of this habit and it's just, it's just doing some kind of facilitation. That, that um, seems like a bit of a learned skill also, right? Like it's a practice skill that you, you, you have a, whatever acuity you have for it, if that's the right word, alacrity, whatever, 
like you recognize it and and practice it and so I, something i thought of while you were talking but kept listening was how are you guys in high school and college particularly in lectures and taking notes what was your because that seems to me like almost training ground for yeah how well do you listen how well do you engage with who's talking to you because you are taking notes because you need that information later you're trying to learn something for exam or whatever but you mm -hmm. also are trying to listen and learn um mm -hmm. and and I, I i think there's something to that i don't this is just a new thought so it's still very raw but i know when i used to take notes in college especially i would have two sheets of paper and one was one was facing this way and one was horizontal so one was portrait one was landscape and on the landscape page which was under the the portrait page was where i would doodle and on the portrait pages where i'd write my notes and i would go back and forth between the two mm. and i remember kids sitting next to me would just look at me like i don't understand how you're doing that like how you're able to do those two things and yet when i would look at the drawings it would remind me of yep the lecture yep um which i think very specific maybe people who draw because people who don't draw don't do that they don't have like they look at the drawing they remember where they were when they drew it and like all that stuff floods back yeah. um so and I think that also, I think drawing can can become sort of uh, unconscious at yeah, a certain yeah. point where you are really just listening. So l language I play with in recent years is I talk about like drawing is like my first language and uh, United States English is my second language, right? It feels more natural to express myself through image sometimes than it does through words. Um, and I, yeah, I, I was a kid in high school who... Uh, I took very doodly notes. And they looked like proto sketch notes, right? Like that, so I would represent ideas as images, like the, and, and I would try to emphasize, like, okay, this is the part where they got really riled up. So I'm going to use like a completely different, like, kind of typeface to like re represent. This is going to be a more jagged um, uh, sort of representation of the thought in words because they're using a different kind of tone right now. I don't, I don't, I didn't have like a system set out. It was more of I was intuiting this kind of thing. Yeah, but it certainly helped reconnect me with what the the moment was like when I was in the classroom and it just felt like a more natural way for me to like capture ideas um it was certainly I mean I was 14 I wasn't like a super sophisticated thinker yet right but it seems like on some level by by creating that shorthand for yourself you were giving your brain more room to listen to what was happening you weren't yeah. like I remember kids in school would write down every I was transcribing what the teacher was saying yeah, and that seems insane. Like, insane is maybe an insensitive word, but that seems like a lot of effort. Whereas instead of saying, you know, just like a, a word with an arrow and a word and a circle, and then just like you start connecting lines and stuff, which is what I used to do. Yeah, because I saw that's how my teacher wrote on the board. Like, I would basically look at what he wrote on the board as he talked, and I sort of said, okay, that's how notes work, and I would mm -hmm. sort of recreate the same idea of just like words with arrows and lines and. <laughs> sub settings it was like a big sort of messy outline um mm -hmm. and i wonder if that has any if that's like again training wheels for for listening and then just i guess how you have conversations with people are the people you're to use language you use are the people around you modeling good listening behavior or are you telling somebody something and they go uh-huh uh -huh. and you're like oh okay <laughs> i see what just happened <laughs> which happens yeah. to everybody like there's always somebody that's not hearing you or listening to you or whatever and you know it's very possible that all of us who make stuff are just trying to be heard by somebody somewhere blah blah, blah. Well, um i think well listening is a very active thing and so you mentioned the sort of like the visual the note taking and all that stuff and absolutely depending on your skills and whatever someone could be doing notes to escape someone could be doing notes to engage and i either either way i think listening is a very active engaging thing uh, it could be about sharing the space and just, you know, um, being present with someone, but it also could be adverbs like maybe in, in, you're listening to investigate or encourage or analyze or synthesize or to recommend something or cons like consulting because I'm because you know, you're um, you're in the context of um, you were asked to advise. And so now you're listening to see how you could help or is it to teach or to lead or to learn. Or whatever. I mean, you can li like listening is a very um, active thing with with potential uh, goals and outcomes that depending on like why you're doing it. Um, and then that is um, 
let's see. So then like, depending on like what your goal and what now is with, with how you would, would, would connect with someone. Um, and I'm curious to hear more of your thoughts, Jersey, because I know you're, you know, you, you, you performing the role of like, well, you know, as someone who wants to, you know, do this better, I mean, I'm right there with you. I want to do this better too. Right. Yeah. Cause I noticed that somehow when I pull it off, well, it does really great things for me and for the people I'm, I care about and or I'm, or I'm con connecting with or just learning about. Right. I mm -hmm. want to feel that more often. I want to be a, like a champion listener or whatever and, and, and connector. Yeah. So how are you? Yeah. I mean, how do you, well, look at I, this? I really liked Greg's comparison to meditation and as somebody who's done a lot of it in the past, like the whole, one of the ideas of some kinds of meditation is to let the thought happen and then just let it flow over you, let it go away. And trust that if it was a good enough thought, it will come back. You, you know, you don't have to like grab on like, that is so good. I'm going to wow them <laughs> with my careful analysis of the situation. You know, uh, it's like, just let it go. And it, like, I, I, I was honest, I was at a having a, I was at a dinner with uh, some people from the comics industry last night. And some, one of the people there was, um, they made it, they, they mentioned that they were at Woodstock back in the sixties. Right. And so like, I was like, Oh, you know, I have a talk. I have a, a point of connection I could possibly have with this person as somebody who's read a lot of biographies about the Beatles. That's like one of the few hobbies I've ever had was like learning a lot about the, the history of the, the band, the Beatles. And in the moment, like there wasn't a place to put it. And I, they were talking. I was listening. So I was like, eh, that's fine. And then there was a lull. And then I was like, hey, you know, back when you mentioned you were at what's the boom, we were off and running again. Right. So it's it's just it's a matter of like letting those thoughts happen and trusting that if I have something good, there will probably be a place for it. If not, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk another time. Um, but like, sort of like I met, it feels like how, how it feels to me is like, there's these little sparks in my brain of like, boom, point of connection, boom, point of connection, boom. That reminded me of a book I've read. Boom. That reminded me of this. Boom. They probably know this person that I know and just letting those things happen and then trust that I'll be able to have the presence of mind to bring them back up at a, at a reasonable place. But right now while they're talking, I'm not going to step over them and I'm not just going to nod and wait for them to stop talking so I can say my thing. And Nate Marcel was sort of agreeing with you earlier, Rob. He said in the chat, you know, listening is a very active thing. Um, it's it, it 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 is an active thing, you know. Um, I suppose someone do someone with a prescriptive mission is also in a way actively listening, but it's just it's not as much about th the collective benefit. It's about their own agenda, right? Um, yeah. Maybe. Well, uh, well, to that there's, end, yeah. To that end, there's also the situation where somebody's talking and you're listening. They say something you disagree with. And suddenly your brain is filled with all the ways that you can say this person is, I disagree with you. And those, sometimes you have to let that sit for a minute and let the person yeah. finish their point and let them mm. say what they're going to say. Because who knows, maybe there's a twist to what they're saying and there's there's something on the end of it that's going to make you go, okay, maybe I don't disagree. But you know, that's another way of testing your listening skills is when somebody says something that you, you disagree with. Like how long can you sit there and go... Yeah. Okay. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And look, and depending on who it is, you know, we all make those decisions in the moment. Like, is it worth the engagement of having this discussion with somebody? Is it worth pointing out to them that they're using the word, the wrong language to describe a thing, even though like sometimes it's not, sometimes you just go, sure. It's a, it's a speech bubble, whatever, <laughs> you know, Oh my God! That's a little. Oh that my was God! A little, that was a little, that was a little juice for for Jersey there. Yeah, Greg. Greg's heard me like in my more my less guarded moments. Yes, I've I've kind of gotten on a tear about that. But, like it's a it's a word balloon. I do the same thing. Yeah, it's a word balloon. But, but that's that's our thing, right? And yeah. like you you sit there in the moment, and like somebody says speech bubble, like this is not worth. Like I'm listening, and it's not right. worth having any more letting it come out any more of my brain than recognizing that somebody used a word wrong all right fine it's an it's a it's a momentary interaction whoever it's with if it's somebody that i had a long like there was gonna be a long-term professional or personal relationship i might say something because then it'll drive me crazy but mm. if it's just somebody in passing it's fine you know but the point being like to the thing we've been talking about in terms of listening it is really about and thoughts get in the way of what the person's saying and it's not easy none of this is easy but it really because 
there's a million distractions in every direction. As you guys are talking, I'm thinking of things based on what you're saying. And I'm putting those things down. Keep listening to what you guys are saying because yeah. that's that's the game. That's the yeah ish. <laughs> uh, and then and then another the asterisk like, that hangs over all of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> another another tactic. I mean, like, this is more of a tactical thing, what less than a strategic thing that I do is like I I default to if all else fails and if things are going south, south. What does that even mean? Um, and I listen to myself when I talk too, so I can catch those moments where I say a word, word, and I can stop myself midstream to go like, okay, I'm not, I'm not subscribed to everything that's coming out of my mouth right now. Um, so should we look up the etymology of, of things going south? <laughs> well, yeah. this is no. that's what I would do where I'm like, oh, wait a minute, where's that come from? <laughs> but, um, like if, if, if I don't. It's definitely idiom. That. I know, I know that it's an idiom. The, the, this, but this is more like when I'm in mixed company, kind of face to face conversations. Is I, I think about using how and why questions, and I'll ask them if I'll, I'll repeat what I think they said to me, and I'll ask, I'll phrase it as a how or why question as a way to like both test my understanding of what's being said, and then also to keep the conversation moving and to pr to, to show that I'm actually like processing what they're saying. Um, but that 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 actually is more of a more like going back to something Joseph said in the chat about like I'm a teacher and I there is a performance aspect to teaching and I feel like when I'm in a social scenario like at a gathering then that does there is more performance there but we're I want to steer us back towards this whole checking in personally idea with like people in our our smaller tighter networks. All I right. had the exact same thought, Jersey. As you were talking, I'm like, we can bring this to one on one check ins because we've gone into like meeting strangers. Yeah, we've gone, yeah. We've gone off the off the uh, a little off path, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah a little bit. So, um, I, I do want to get at this idea of like, like why, why we do this. Um, what, what's the point of checking with your tight network when, after all, we're, we've got all this hustle to do to get, you know, we gotta we gotta create pitches, we gotta reach out to editors and agents, we gotta have our social media presence because, oh my gosh, if you don't have a day where something gets posted on Facebook, you may as well not exist. Um, I gotta, I gotta, it's tax season right now. I got taxes to worry about, you know. Um, you're asking me to like also have to make time for an hour and a half phone call with the six people in my tight network. How do you guys? think about managing that friction, right? It's not so the I, easiest I think, thing to do. I think for me, there's, there's three, I think it's three, three reasons to do all this. Okay. So, so one is a lot of us work at home. We, we don't work in offices. We don't have the general social interaction that people have. So there's something to interacting with other people. There's something healthy about that. I don't know the science behind it, but I think there's something to, and, and for me, it's a case of a, uh, being being the the do unto others thing, right? I would want people to check in on me, so I'm going to check in on others. We're living in a society; we should all be doing our best to to you know keep connections as best we can. Otherwise, it's very lonely, and that's no fun. Uh, two is there's like commiseration. So like, yes, it's tax season. We're working on pitch. We're doing all these things. It's nice to talk to other people who are doing those things, compare notes, make sure you're not crazy. Oh my God, nobody's buying this thing I'm pitching. I must, I must suck. Oh wait, that other person also can't sell a thing they're doing. We can't both suck. <laughs> I had I had this conversation with a young person in my life recently where they're like, well, it must be me. I'm the common denominator. I'm like, you're the common denominator of your life. You can't use yeah. that as your, your only measurement metric. <laughs> yeah. And then and then to that other end is as as if you're in a position where like you're down, like nobody's buying this thing or nobody, you know, nobody's clicking my whatever's your friends and your peers can help you feel better about yourself yeah. uh, in ways that aren't like you'll get them kiddo in like platitude, yeah. but in genuine, like, listen, this is what's happening to me. I'm hearing what you're saying. Here's what's happening to me. And here's how things can get better. Here's how things look, they might get worse, but know this, that, and the other. And it's just that it's legit communication yeah. between human beings about your personal experiences. There is yeah. value in it. There's value in not feeling like you are the only one, right? Mm -hmm. Your tribe, right? Isn't that the 
which which may not be very sensitive anymore to refer to something as your tribe, but it is a thing. Like your your the, the group that you roll with, your crew, let's say, is your crew for a reason. Like they they offer you something in terms of commiseration and they get your humor. I mean, one of the things I do love about checking with Jersey is at least once or twice, he's going to laugh at Jersey laughs. And that me feel very good. Not like selfishly, like, oh man, that feels good. Like I like that I can make Jersey laugh, but I also there's a personal satisfaction of like, ooh, feels good to get a laugh like that. Like it feels like a, a little little victory. Um so those are the things I think are of value in terms of, of the check ins and, and the one on one or occasionally I'll have like conference calls where there's three or four people on the phone. And that's also fun because then it's just it's group it's it's like being in a studio. Yeah. Which uh Again, people do studios for a reason. It's it's that communal experience. Mm-hmm. What are yeah, you? There, there's 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 a uh, well, no, I just to, to like yes, and what you just said is like there's a self care aspect to it, right? It's it's uh, something Nate put in the chat that I thought was like also echoing what you were saying. Is he said one of my favorite listening practices is when I'm having a hard time is to play a game of theater where I imagine the people or person in front of me is giving me a one person acting performance. It becomes just amazing and dramatic. Um, but like this idea of like uh, giving your full attention to somebody also has like a an entertaining aspect to it even even if you're commiserating um it's it's a way to sort of um check yourself on the map because like like some, when i'm checking in with rob or greg a lot of times it's just like and i'll say i know i've said this to rob before it's like look i don't want anybody to fix my problem i just want to say what it is and have somebody go dude that's hard just so i know that i am not uh too stuck in my own head thinking that this is hard you know what i mean um like that it can sometimes be enough to get me back to, you know, doing the thing again. Um, just because I know that like, okay, I know objectively this is hard now and that this is the thing that I'm, I'm going to encounter and it's going to be difficult and I'll get through it. It's funny. Um, there's, there's a podcast I listened to, to what you just said called the Jackie and Lori show. It's these two comedians talking about the job of being comedian. If you have, if you have anything in comedy as a career, this show is great because they really talk about, gigs and getting paid for gigs and how much they work and all that stuff and every now and again uh will be complaining about something and complain maybe the wrong word they'll say something that's challenging her life in the moment and jackie will start offering solutions and then she will stop herself and say that's not what you need i'm gonna stop you didn't ask for that that all sounds terrible and then yeah. keep talking and it's exactly that thing of like sometimes people just need to get the stuff out and yeah. I catch myself doing it. I try and solve problems and just like, well, what if you did this? I'm like, no, no, that's, that's not what this yeah. person. And then again, that's to listening. It's like, they're not looking for solutions. They're looking for empathy or just of somebody to listen to them. Or, or, or like sometimes talking the stuff out is our way of actually trying to process it. Right. I mean, there's a reason Absolutely. that therapy, you know, like psychotherapy is sitting there talking about your problems. Right. It's like you try to find language to explore what the, the thing you're actually uh, wrestling with, you know? Yeah. So there's a therapeutic aspect yeah. to it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And um, the coaching whole system, this, the stuff that both Kate, my wife and I studied, uh, was very much a certain kind of listening as a skill. And it's that whole, um, it's a, kind of like how you describe therapy, but a lot of times therapy, it's, it's sort of like bringing someone up to functional mental health. But then when you're still at functional mental health, there's still, you know, hard things and challenges and puzzles and stuff. So how, how can you continue to process those things? Having someone where, um, you know, as a friend or as a professional holding that space to let you unpack your thoughts, hear your own narrative is huge. And in someone in being, you know, professional or a friend, when one of the things you practice in coaching is very much that, that uh, skillful aspect of listening, which is to not prescribe and to not jump in. But of course, in, you know, you, you're, we're not robots, right? So talking with a friend, um, well, I mean, heck, talking with my wife or whatever, or even with my kids, where you can get into a situation where uh, you want to jump in and say like, oh, haven't you tried this or whatever? And I've, I'm, it's, I, I, that's something I try to practice is to, to, is to not go there. I feel like teenage Rob and twenties Rob was full of that. Like, you know, 
you know, somehow uh, heavy metal, full on platitudes cranked to 11. And um, haven't you tried blank? Um, which, you know, it's not the worst uh, thing to do in the world, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's not holding that space. And we, you know, to give that is a skill and it's um, anyway, something that um, just to, I guess, really underline in, you know, dark crayon to say that. I just, yeah, I just like the image of the word. Analects of Confucius being, you know, spoken in a death metal voice, making it more, more true and profound. <laughs> sure. I understood like 20% of those words. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, What's an that's why I write notes because I'm like, I gotta go look up the Analects of Confucius. You know, that know. was just his book. It was just his book. I wasn't trying okay. to be. <laughs> I, I was listening. I didn't understand it. I asked the question. That was for me. <laughs> uh, thank you. So, so yeah, Confucianism. I never really, uh, when I was following the signals as far as philosophies to consume, you know, I, I went far more toward Taoism. And then look, we, we in a recent read watch play episode. I was talking about how I was listening to a great courses series on great, great minds of the Eastern tradition. And so there was just a whole big section on the Analex Confucius. And I also found that no, it's pronounced. No... Huh. Go ahead. You found it announced. Oh, I was, I was actually going to go the, like down a road about the things I learned on it. Nobody cares right now. Uh, let's, <laughs> I do want. I do want to. Um, <laughs> I want to ask Greg because you mentioned a podcast where it was two comedians talking, and I didn't quite catch the name. And I wanted to put it in the show notes. It's the Jackie and Lori Show. J A C K I E. Okay. It's Jackie Cation okay. and Lori Kilmartin. Jackie Cation was on Stuff Said, which I will say, nothing will help become a better listener than hosting a one-on-one podcast. Yeah. Actually, yeah, uh, I, I those, mean, I would prep for those, and I would map out what things they say to me. Yeah, and then a conversation like, "Oh, they're going a different direction." You throw your notes out and just talk to some. Uh, that and that's that's active listening and all the things we've been talking about. The other, the other, I would recommend that and or teach a class. Because, yeah, like, this is a thing that I learned very quickly. And I told the story a hundred times in the show is like when I did my 10 week lesson plan for my first time and I put it in front of my t teaching teacher, the person who taught me how to be a teacher. And she said, this is great. You know, you're not using this, right? And I was like, what? what are you talking about? This is my plan. This is my recipe for success. No, nothing can go wrong now, you know? And then like I got in the room like, oh, every room's different. Every room has a different chemistry to it. And I have to be like in the moment to like uh, uh, to move with it in a way so i'm not telling kids to shut up you know because <laughs> we've all had that teacher <laughs> and i was not going to be that teacher so but um but yeah i i i would say that pod doing a podcast um and like really trying to do like a, a, a stellar job of like honoring the person who is showing up to spend their time with you um will teach you a lot about active listening right um, yeah so um are we at a good point to break into another ad spot and then maybe get to our two-minute practice? What do you guys think? I'm giving a thumbs up visually. I, I think that's really good. It just, I there's always deeper layers to 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 dig into, and I think I'll, I I can I, I can hold on to that. And uh, who knows? Maybe there's future conversations, or maybe we could do a closing thought. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. So um, in about uh, a minute and a half to two minutes, we're going to come back with the two minute practice for this week and then maybe a closing thought. But before we do that, we got to thank some more people who make this show possible. And those people happen to be us. We make this show possible. And the thing that, you know, we make things and we think hard about the things we make, bring those thoughts to become this thing called the Lean Into Art Cast. The thing that I make that I hope you will check out uh, this time is let me pull it up on the screen. Whoops, wrong thing to pull up on the screen. Where is it? It's right there. It's the 4 Million Years Later podcast. And it is, so it's another podcast I do, but it's a very different one than the Lean Tart cast. It is a Transformers podcast where me and an old friend watch an episode of the Transformers series in order and then get together with microphones and talk about what we saw. A lot of uh, 
a lot of thinking about a half hour or 21 minute cartoon. Some of these episodes go for like an hour and 40 minutes long of us picking apart characters, analyzing story, inferring what the writers were up to and acknowledging the uh, odd inconsistencies that happen when you make a 21 minute advertisement for toys in the 1980s. That's at 4millionyearslater.com or in your favorite podcatcher. Uh, Rob, you make things too um, and you do coaching. I do. So what's funny is I, I think I'll emphasize the Skillshare workshops I have, mm. which okay. you can get to by going to robstenzinger.com. And I've got some, you know, just click on a link to, for instance, the drawing user journey maps, or I've got a link in the navigation up above that just says Skillshare teaching. So um, go ahead and click on one of those and you'll see four workshops I do. If you sign up for Skillshare, you have access to every workshop I put together on, you know, on that platform. So there's drawing user journey maps, there's sketching the happiest kitty in the universe, there's customizing your next creative challenge, and there's goal setting using design plus storytelling. All different, different aspects of having a process to creatively manage, you know, interesting different circumstances. Some of them, uh, like sketching the happiest kitty, that, that'd be a really fun one to just do that as a family. Like just hit, you know, uh, put your laptop on the, on your table and, and get together and do that with, uh, with whoever, you know, uh, friends or family. Um, drawing user journey maps, that's going to help you with collaborating across the complexities of putting yourself in others' perspectives and understanding like what might be most important to, to, to address first as in, in a project. You think about the journey of a user and how before they know your product and then as they progress and then after. And then, you know, life as someone else on the team or if you're wearing all the hats, it's good to remem- remind yourself to wear the other hats of like, well, marketing and uh, maybe it's art or design or engineering or even uh, other, you know, finance and whatnot too. And you think about like what's going well or not along that journey and all of a sudden you have lots of clarity to help with working with yourself in a disciplined way or collaborate with people of all sorts of different perspectives. And then everyone sees their voice on this big map and they're like, wow, we really are part of one shared purpose and let's keep going on this project. So that's really good stuff. And yeah, so all these things are available on my Skillshare page. So go to robstenzinger.com for easy shortcut to that or just search for my name and Skillshare.com. And if you are uh, listening to the show and want to interact with us more often, there is the Lean Into Art Discord. There will be an invite link in the show notes below the video or in the you know the, your podcatcher. <laughs> and what is it? It's a forum. It's a forum where you can interact with us on a regular basis. There are three public channels, three channels only for people who support us on Patreon. So, or you can just search for Lean Into Art on Discord if you have the app. Okay. Uh, I think it's time once again for the two-minute practice. Hello, Rob. Hey, Jersey. And our special guest for this two-minute practice update, Greg Schiegel. Hey, Greg. Hello, gang. Um, So let's see. We actually um, do this as like a separate extra podcast that you can just download them all at once. And it's a special segment on the Lean Into Art cast. You can learn more about Lean Into Art, of course, by going to leanintoart.com. And, uh, but this segment is all about this, this thing about where we, um, you know what, creative challenges are great. They can take a day, a week, a month or whatever, but what if we had some of those benefits and got rid of the pressure and just said, let's try something for two minutes. And that's what this is about. And so what we do on this show is we talk about our previous practice and how it went, and then we pick something else to, to give a try. And that's just food for thought. And you can think about, um, you know, more of this and see the other examples, of course, by going into leanintoart.com slash the number two, then minute practice. So um, I know, Jersey, you did have a practice last week. Um, I did. Do you want to start there? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, so I uh, decided to do two minutes of writing every day. And I had on my desk at the time when we were selecting our practice, I had a blank composition book that I had intended on doing some writing exercises in, having recently listened to Natalie Goldberg's book, Writing Down the Bones. And she talked a lot about writing warm-up exercises. And I thought, well, okay, well, this will be a way to get me uh, attuned and accustomed to this idea of just showing up, no prompts, no agenda, just start writing. And if I were to reflect on how the week went, the first entries were very much like journal entries. And it was really like me wrestling with the meta activity of just writing. 
<laughs> so it's like me like exploring my mental state like how am i feeling about this oh i don't like doing this um and then as the week went on it got to be more like me showing up and just talking about um i started exploring different um things that i enjoy about right about when i read other people's writing that i don't see enough in my own writing so like i tried to do an entry where it's like all i'm going to do is try to describe something as in as much detail as i possibly can i'm going to try to describe and i, I wrote about a, a little league baseball experience you know when i was in playing baseball as a kid and i was trying to capture as much detail as i could in as much specific detail as i could instead of saying it was sad it was fun it was happy it was sad like really try to it's like well make the reader say it was happy or it was sad um but that that wow. that that's a but, lot did you do that in two minutes no <laughs> <laughs> I got about a third of the way there, and I said beep 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 beep. Ah, rats! You know, and then, so I you know, I cheated one day, and I kept writing for like an extra like minute and a half because like this is I, I'm getting somewhere with this, and I want to keep going. Um, but so like that was the tension I ran into was the the beginning of the week too much wrestling with the emotion of starting and then towards the end of the week it was wrestling with the, the constraint of the time but i really wanted to honor the constraint and not you know not cheat too much um because i got other stuff to do too and the whole idea is to keep this thing inexpensive so but um if, if i were to have a takeaway i'm gr glad i did it because i feel like i got a i experienced a narrative of my of my own personal experience in doing it that is going to help me navigate when i do more in-depth writing practice like 30 minutes of writing um i know what I, I have a better sense of what kind of well to use metaphors that i like to use what kind of monsters are in that room you know what about you rub uh well let's see i did um i succeeded doing four different uh practice sessions and in general um i took it as as sort of an, an improv thing um i mean it's just weird. I, I basically, at, I hit start on the timer that I created, which I need to upload this, this uh, sample audio file in case folks want, want this. Basically, there's, I recorded or I created a, something where um, it's me facilitating for two minutes where there's a little bit of a lead in where I say, all right, your two minute practice is about to start. And then a little bit of background music. And then every 30 seconds, I chime in and I let you know uh, how much is time you have left. So you can just play this audio file and it, it's a kind of a built-in facilitation thing. And so I would, I hit start on that. And my first, my first practice was like the anomaly because it was like, I didn't even try this yet. I wanted to start wrestling with the meta and say like, and, and this is what I do when I do like just rough writing and I just get words out. I complain about getting words out and I'm like, Oh, you know, this is, and I just start talking about anything about writing my keyboard, how I'm sitting, I don't like this, all this stuff. And it just, I let those words come out yeah. and uh, I get past some resistance and I can, I can dig in. But I, I was like, I stopped myself as that audio file started and I wrote two words and I don't know why I wrote elbow farm. And then <laughs> um, I wrote about elbow farm. <laughs> that, and I was like, okay. But then the next practice, um, all of a sudden I went somewhere where I went to my past, like you did Jersey, where mm. um, I, I, I sat there and I thought, I don't want to do another elbow farm, but like this, as fine as that was, I want, I want to actually write at something that, that I care about that's cohesive and thoughtful or something in two minutes. And uh, so I, I wrote the word skateboard and then I immediately mined my past about skateboarding. Mm. And that's that with that for the next other sessions I succeeded in. It was, um, you know, um, the next one was Apple II. And the one after that was, what was it? It was uh, working out. Uh. And so, he, and then it was sp more specific and talking about times and uh, just experiences of my past, but just in that two minute window. But um, so I don't know. I have lots of different you know, feelings about it where maybe two minutes isn't enough. Uh, maybe it's perfect for warming up and I would feel inconclusive about it. But what I'm really curious is like, Greg, you hearing this and yep. is this, yeah. Do you do this kind of writing practice at all or, or. I am uh, far less um, disciplined 
in these sorts of things. Hmm. Uh, I tend to, if there's something to work on, I'm going to work on it. And then if I have like five things to work on, I try and do those five things and I bounce up. I bounce on. So um, I, I very rarely like dedicate two minutes or there are people that like, I wake up and I write for an hour. Like I don't tend to function that way. So like, for instance, I write a monthly newsletter and throughout the month, I will think about what am I going to write about for this month? So I do know that in April, the newsletter is always a comedy focused newsletter. I write about, I, I post clips of comedy, 10 clip comedy on April 1st. It's a very simple idea. So I came up with a couple of days ago, I realized what I want to do for those clips is I want it to be 10 clips of things I found funny before I was in school. So prior to being 15 years old. So I can't say it's two minutes every day, but for the past couple of days, I'm just sort of letting my brain go to well, what was funny. Like what, what things, and I sort of just start as a sort of reach my steps. I'm like, what were the things I remember as a really little kid making me and maybe me and my brothers laugh. And then I sort of am tracking up to trying to just remember things that were funny to me, which is in some way a creative exercise. Um, and there is an application for it, but it's, it's, I'm not as regimented as like setting a timer. Like for the next two minutes, think funny. Um, <laughs> although I do also do that because I'm trying to come up with premises for jokes and that's a separate thing. But even there, I'm not setting a timer. I'm just like, okay, on my way to the gym, I'm going to think about a press and is something funny to it or whatever. Uh, and then outside of that, I've been trying to crack my knuckles less. So that's been a constant sort of consciousness thing where every time I go like this, I stop myself. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, again, less of a specific creative practice, but a personal behavioral practice that's been interesting um, to try and stop something that you, you've been doing for decades. That's an interesting is, twist on this idea is like, is we, there is a physical practice aspect to the two minute practice we've explored in the past, like planking for two minutes every day for one week, you know? Uh, but like, like altering what we perceive to be, well, altering habits we would like to alter. Let's put it that way. Um, that's an interesting, a very personal approach to, uh, for, for the leaners who are listening, if you want to explore your own two minute practice, you could just name something like that, right? Yeah, I mean, Every in terms of practicing, I should be meditating two, two minutes a day. Uh, and I don't, and I should speaking. I mean, that's a literal practice and I've, I've really fallen off and, uh, I, I, I should. Well, deep breathing <laughs> uh, would, would not hurt. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, yes, there, there's, there's I, very few people would, would argue with you on, on introducing yeah. that into your life in, in some way or another. Yeah. Yeah. Right, did, do we have a thought on what we want to take on, Rob, for this week's two minute practice? Well, we've gone back and forth. We did, we've, we've kind of broad brush said we have this area of practices that are making something, but then there's this other broad brush of uh, self-care type things that, uh, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm wondering and very open to like, Greg, if you have, you have ideas, like something that, um, especially if you're like, Hey, I want to try this, but oh, I would also be curious about Greg's reaction to this, mm -hmm. this whole thing. Like yeah. your, your fresh perspective, like, is this two minute practice thing, uh, enticing or baloney or what? Like, where are you I would at? never say it's baloney. Um, uh, it's interesting. I don't know that I'm wired for it just cause again, I don't, but then again, I say that as somebody who goes to the gym six days a week, mm -hmm. flosses twice a day. Like I have routines and yeah. I do these routines. Um, I have a bunch of stretches I need to do cause I have a thing in my neck. So I do. Every day I'm doing a series of things that take longer than two minutes. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a matter of how you fit it into your life. And, you know, right now I am attempting to get paying jobs. So I'm, my brain is less on exercises and more on pragmatic solutions to immediate situations. Um, but I think... If you're in a position where you're like, I just want to flex some stuff. I want to get, again, exercise, mental exercise, drawing exercise, creative exercise. Absolutely, all of these things have value. Um, and again, I think even 
to the to the bigger thing we've been talking about, the, the one-on-one check-ins are ways to to get get juices flowing where you you call and say, hey, I have this idea for that's another thing I I've done check-ins for. I'm like, hey, I have this, is this a thing? Is this a book? Here's an idea I have. Here's a yeah. concept. And you run it by another human person and they say, huh. I mean, Jersey, you and I have had some conversations lately where you'll say a thing and I'll say, consider this, maybe, maybe go this direction. I know you don't want to hear it, but blah, blah, blah. And, and, <laughs> and I know. did not, I did not want to hear yeah. it. But, <laughs> but I mean, and that, that's, that is, and that could be a two minute conversation. Like there, that could be a, that maybe that's the exercise. Like take two minutes to, uh, call somebody. There's no way you can do it in two minutes, but like, no. But think about calling somebody. I have a twist on this. How about uh, do do use two minutes to think of questions for friends? Mm. Okay. Can I can I add a uh, a second option? Yeah. Two minutes to ask questions for friends. Um, Nate Marcel also in the chat mentioned sending postcards to people, oh. uh, which I think is a awesome way to touch base in a very inexpensive way. Um, you know, I would say. Uh, take two minutes to write a postcard to uh, a person in your narrow, your your tight network, or write down questions for somebody you haven't talked with in a while. Okay, I'll allow it. Thanks. <laughs> I might I might not do it, but I allow it. <laughs> for me, it would be more than two minutes to find a postcard. So get to the post. That's why there's two options, right? Like the two, yeah, like two, two minutes of Absolutely. questions you could do. But like, like so, like I, I, when Nate brought that up in the chat room, it reminded me that I, Ann and I, literally keep like a uh, uh, an index card box full of postcards for that purpose. So like, we just collect postcards year year round, and it'll just like grab one and send it off to somebody. So. Mm. Um, that's a good point. So go. that's when it's a puzzle for me. Like I'm more prepared for the questions than the postcards, right? Kind of like okay. when we did the music, uh, p- pick up an instrument and make noise for two minutes. I was pretty prepared. Yes. Uh, for- Whereas I was not. Yes. Yeah. So interesting. Okay. There's a lot of tensions that we're finding. And I think it'd be fun at some point we'll do, we'll do a reflection on the two minute practices so far. And uh, we're, we're noticing you know some interesting themes here. Um, so, yep. You open all the, the can of worms thing where there's always the potential to go more than two minutes and uh and much more than that but i think i think this was a a useful exploration and uh we'll check Agreed. in next week all right. all right thank you to rob and greg thank you thank you okay so now we're at final thought hmm. rob right. you said Rob, you said you had something that you you wanted to dig in a little bit more on before we... I sure implied that, didn't I? You did. uh, (laughs) So help help me out here. Um, So it's it's not fully formed, but I really feel like that, that, that underneath this, the idea of like, I've at different stages of my life have just really pushed against this idea of networking and didn't do a great job at it and have deeply appreciate it now, have recently... um, I think have improved regarding that and really believing that it, it does serve a great social function on a bunch of different levels and, uh, and in characterizing it in a negative way is it's, it's really shows a lot more about me than, than anyone who does it. Right. It's just sort of like, you know, I, I, I was insecure and I grumped about it, but um, so there's, there's the, the believing in it, right? But the, I think there's a chain of things to believe in and about it, right? Where, uh, like Greg, Greg was painting a picture, but but in the in the in the space that wasn't explicit, it was it, there were things like, well, um, you as you're going about, this is what I'm hearing, and I may be misinterpreting, but you know, please react to this. Um, as you're going about your networking, well, first you, you believe in doing it, and you shared like at least three those three strong reasons why you go about it. And, but there's sort of the doing it well and healthily and sustainably and stuff like that. And you just kind of acknowledge this stuff where um, I don't think it's obvious for everybody. And if we could pull out even like one or two of those, those uh, ideas or preferences or principles that you, you, um, you just naturally do, I think that'd be really handy. 
for everybody. Well, I mean, I to what you were saying, I I also don't know that I've ever been particularly great at like group joining. So you you were, you were talking about like the social networking that sort of thing. So like I remember there was a period in the early 2000s where people were doing anthology comics and like participating in these like let's all get together and do these free five page comics for an anthology and I never did any of those. And I think as a result, I feel I have felt like over many years that I've, I'm not a particular group of cartoonists. Like I am in a separate sort of category of people, you know, I worked at Marvel while a lot of people were doing independent stuff. And it was just like, there's like a, I was, I feel like I was part of groups. Um, and, you know, now older, even further apart from a lot of things, you, you, it's, you'd be very aware of it. So maybe in some regard, I, I hold my crew even a little tighter. Like, at least I got my crew. I got to not be part of this group or that group. At least my perception is that I'm not part of this group or that group. I might well be, and I just don't get it. But I know I've always got my crew, and I can go to the crew, and we can talk, and we can sort of have our own experiences. Um, I don't know if that answered the question. I might have gone off on my own thing. But, but I think... Uh... That- no, I mean that's. Yeah. Let's see, caring like I guess that's that's that is heading toward the question. It's the you're you're caring about uh, aspects of this that are sort of between the lines of the functional networking stuff, right? So like having a crew, that's totally something that that I'm hearing. Uh, caring about that, it's like a guiding thing. It's this it's this reason or motivation to uh, to keep this mechanism going. And uh, that's, yeah, for me, that's it's really a lot less about professional networking tool and it's much more about a personal wellness and and social animal tool Mm. um because on the professional networking thing that's that is social media that is going to meetups and conventions and doing and and all that stuff going to the bar after a convention and having small talk and oh what are you working on oh what are you working on and i have always preferred finding a couple of couches or chairs in the hotel lobby, sitting with a group of people. Everybody's got their sketchbooks out. We're making jokes. We're drawing. We're having a good time. Yep. Um, it's just the way I'm wired for it. It feels like a more genuine interaction. And then I feel like those are people that I can then contact by phone or by email and ask questions and not feel like I'm intruding on their time because I feel like I've made some personal connection. If, if I'm versus yeah. versus bark con it's so it's all so transparent what's happening everybody's hustling and the hustle is exhausting what editors what editors do you know what, of course we all want we are all hustling but something okay so if i were if i were to take like your thread there and extract out like specific instances where i've observed you doing this and point to what i would specifically say are the things you're doing greg uh for the purposes of, of uh, you know just adding some yeah, yeah. extra context to the to Rob's question. Break, um, break me down, baby. Something you do in personal interactions that you also bring to your broader network interactions is you are really good and you very naturally categorize in your head what you love about the different people in your life. You could tell everybody, you could, you could put, show up to every conversation saying, this is the specific thing that I find very charming about you. You never, you never say it that way, but you, you speak to that, right? Um, something that when we were at Kineticon and Chris Jerus was telling the story that was making me unravel, um, and I said, yeah, I'm sorry, everybody, I'm a really easy audience. And Greg goes, no, you're a great audience because you listen, you laugh, and you add to it. You, you add extra information or a- add extra <laughs> I context. I remember this conversation. And, and I remember, and that yeah. made me feel super awesome because at first I felt like, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a foolish man who likes to like talk with children about comics, you know? I, I, in the, 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 the example everybody uses is like in the apocalypse, I'm the first to go, you know? Um, but like you pointed out, like no, 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 that that what you're doing is actually valuable to everybody here at this table, right? You do that with everybody you talk to. You could do that when you talk to Chris Jerusso, when you talk to Jacob Shabbat. You're always bringing that that focus to the conversation. And now to like extract that back, what I've seen you when you're connecting with people at conventions, you're always super mindful to zero in on this is a thing that I've noticed about you that I want to ask you more about. 
You know, I saw you sitting at a table with Jimmy Gownley doing that. I saw you with Frank Camuso doing that. You brought up the fact that Frank Camuso did stand up at one point in his life, right? And you're like, I want to yeah. dig into that, right? And it it makes it so that anybody, when they meet Greg, and I highly advise you, if, if Greg's going to be at an event in your, your area, maybe wait a couple months after this whole panic about coronavirus goes away. Go find him and just bring up any subject. He'll find a, a way to dig into that. But... um. But you're really good. Like Very the fact of you, thank you. But but I've seen you do that with all of the people in your your your, you know what what what, what was the word used for it earlier? Crew. Your your crew, and then you extract that out to use it to connect with to bring more people into that crew. So I would say that like the chief skill that we're talking about there is when you have an interaction with somebody, try to and I do this myself is like I try to like examine what was it about that that I found so delightful what was it that that person did what was it do I infer that they like their their background or their you know their approach their philosophy their worldview you know like I had a really wonderful conversation with Chris Schweitzer at CXC a few years ago and why was it so so lovely it was because that was a man who was ready in a bar full of shouty people to have a deep philosophical conversation about ethics and he was yeah, ready Chris to do it with. I like he, he's fantastic, right? And it's like I, and I know that I'm going to get into the weeds on some kind of ethical debate with Chris, and he's never going to judge me. He's going to smile, and he's going to be like, "We're still figuring this out. We're figuring this out together," you know. Now, now, so. at the risk of of painting myself anything other than a highly uh, joyous and altruistic and sees the light and everything, to the story Jersey was telling about Terrificon. The thing he didn't add in was after I paid him the compliment of what a good audience he is, I gave an example of somebody who is not <laughs> and got a terrific laugh out of Jersey by doing so. <laughs> and I won't name who that is because that's not what's important. The point is that I can also do that in a cutting, verbal way. <laughs> and I know that I can be an awful uh, shark about things. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, it's like one of the I'm things. I'm not that the you, hero Jersey wants me to be. No, 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 no. <laughs> let me let me back up another, again because like you've also used that knife on me, and when you've cut me to the bone, it's always been true. And then like, and then I'm like, yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. He he's he's calling. He's got my number. You know, I I never feel like it's ever specifically designed to be hurtful, but it's more like you know, comedians have to tell the truth. You know. Look, I I do. Uh, the worst victim of it is me. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> no, but yeah, Greg's tipped my boat in the past. That well, it, are we, and we're I, all our, our, we are all our worst critics, right? That's the that's the cliche. So yeah, fair enough. if I if I'm if I'm to dish anything out, I have to be able to take it. <laughs> which is which is fair, and we're all um, we're all complex beings, you know, not you know, perfect, analytical, joyful. Uh, uh, on stage folks like we are you know, always during the show. I mean, there's, but so you have these connections though, that you, you find. So one thing that, that this, that this networking does too, is that you will, um, you'll find people you trust and then you can be more vulnerable and you can be the lesser versions of yourself. And that's a bingo right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It really is. That's pretty good. All right, I think we did a podcast, guys. Um, yeah. Gosh, Greg, thank you for being here for this one. I, I, I'm really, really glad that you're here to lend your perspective and your, you know, your, uh, what you would describe as overthinking, but what Rob would describe as just the right amount of thinking, which is all well, the thank thinking. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys <laughs> having me on. Um, people who are, you know, who got something out of this discussion should go to gregshegel.com, which I'll pull up on screen, um, where you can also sign up for his email newsletter, which I also subscribe to. And it is nice to get emails that are actually fun to read instead of adding items to my to-do list. So thanks. Um, yeah. I, I will say as far as to-do list, I did while we've been talking, uh, I put a coupon code on my website, this is going to be my missionary moment. If you go to gregshegel.com slash store, I do a mm. graphical series called Picks. You can see a poster of it right over here. Uh, there's a 20% off any books in the store using the coupon code LIA through uh, March 20th. Oh, that's awesome. Active so the coupon, coupon code. code. 
L I for anybody interested and uh, lean into art. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm on the social media stuff. It's my name and then the t shirts and I got a new t shirt coming out on Sunday with uh twenty seven drawings of Tom Hanks. Oh, that's right, because you're on Instagram. <laughs> And you've been posting right. these Hanks a lot images of all these drawings of Tom Hanks yes. adding up to this T-shirt. So, yes. <laughs> so it will yes. be more well recognized than Neil's whole taxi if we could. Go for <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hanks has had a has had a career greater than uh, Joe the volcano. <laughs> Joe the volcano. Put on that movie I like, Joe the Volcano. I'll allow it. I'll allow it for the humor of it. <laughs> I'm I'm saying more and more things like that. Kids playing with the Switch. Oh, look at your Game Boy. That's fun. Um. So, but you people should go to gregshegel.com and uh, purchase picks for a young person in your life, uh, or if you just enjoy like really good all ages superheroing with awesome, uh, almost silver age nonsense in it. Um, thank you I, I I love those books uh, and and the young person in your life will too use the LIA coupon code at checkout before March 20th so you said yes March 20th yeah. is I set the expiration for March 20th great okay that's a week and a half right from the yeah. time of this recording yes mm-hmm. all right so yes. uh, now you get now you guys plug your things because you're the host and okay I know you already did but do more Thank you. Thank you. All right, we record the show weekly, usually on Thursdays at noon Eastern time. We stream it live on twitch.tv slash lean into art. And then we collect that as a podcast at patreon.com slash lean into art and lean into art.com. Until next time, I've been Jersey Drozd of lean into art.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger of lean into art.com. And I'm Rob Stenzinger, places like Instagram. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user leanintoart, and you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.